Well, um, so I, on, on some level, it, it's not really different. There are a lot of different phrases that are, are being, I think, thrown around that all in essence come back to the same same thing. So for instance, um, statistical learning um, is, is another, another way to describe the theory around machine learning. And I suppose we called this issue data science uh, because we're interested in sort of the intersection of, of the area of, of big data with uh, statistical methods and machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, I think what has changed over the years is the access we have to increasingly uh, large data sets, which have in turn motivated increasingly sophisticated uh, methods that are all inherently connected back to statistics, I, I would say, um, in general. I, I think, unfortunately, may maybe you had, had a better uh, grasp of, of statistics in, in grad school than I did, but I, I think, um, uh, I think a lot of us don't don't learn a lot of the basic fundamentals necessarily of uh, of, of statistical techniques that are really needed um, and are in integral to, to data science techniques. Uh, so simple things like cross validation, um, you know, having a well defined set aside test set. Um, all of the things that um, are essential in data science actually would be great if. It, people applied it when they're doing the statistics of small data sets. Yeah, it's, I have a, it's a good story to tell from my perspective because I'm not either trained as a data scientist or a computational chemist and actually not even trained as an analytical chemist. So the stats I learned were the 1980s um, initially. And, you know, these were, you know, the kind of stats like, you know, goodness of fits, uh, you know, maybe a you know, a student t-test or something like that. Um, and the stats we, the statistics that are generally employed in, in um, data science are really diverse. Um, so the way I think of data science and machine learning is that you have some data, you have some feature set, you try to connect the two with some algorithm and there's many, many different types. And then you see how well that connects and that's the statistics. And statistics can range from, you know, uh, again, an R squared value, goodness of fit type uh, analysis, all the way to more complex um, validations, predictions, and so on. And um, through the process of developing, at least in my group, uh, our data science program, I've been instructed mostly by my students on, you know, traditional and modern statistical approaches to um, uh, taking care of data. So it's not what your parents taught you or your grandparents taught you in your courses many years ago, um, but they are connected, truly connected. It's just, in the end, it's just, you know, how good is your correlation and how predictive is it? Um. Uh, you know that's that's a challenging question question to answer since I'm I'm not a fortune teller. But uh, you know I think where data science and, and machine learning have the have the most promise and the most payoff, I think are, are two classes of, of areas. So one is um, one is where we now have access to bigger and bigger data sets and we can start to learn patterns and phenomena and make predictions from very large amounts of data. Um, but then in the space where we still live with relatively small data sets, and so that could be uh, experimental catalysis, it could be uh, transition metal chemistry, any number of things where we have, um, for the phenomenon we're trying to understand, we, we're still not at the very large data set limit. Um, uh, there's a lot of payoff and promise for data science and machine learning where uh, analytical and simple uh, mappings between structure and property have failed. So cases where um, a, sim a simple linear relationship or a simple uh, functional form or a simple rule that we might normally write down uh, doesn't work. So uh, machine learning mappings uh, can help encode things that we would normally fail to encode with simple theories or with, um, with, with simple models. I mean, that's a big question, obviously. Uh, Personally, I mean, I I think the way I always answer a question of this sort is, you know, nearly I have almost a 25 person group and nearly everyone in my group has some aspect of their project that has data science involved. So I think it's a big deal um, uh, for the field. You know, what I've seen 
um, mainly from my interactions with both the energy and pharmaceutical fields, is that uh, what people have done historically is collect a bunch of data and then put it in a notebook and ignore it. And I think what we have available to us are lots of libraries of data and data being collected at really rapid in rapid um, form, and especially in the, the pharmaceutical industry to optimize reactions. And the, the question or the way I always state this is it'd be really nice to use every piece of data to inform your next decisions. And I think that's the way we're going to see data science used, at least in the kind of standard form. The more aggressive forms of using data science, at least in, again, my opinion, um, is related to can you have generative um, machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence type um, goals, which means can you take the data on hand and generate, let's say, a new reaction altogether or perhaps um, you know, a new ligand that's never been made for a particular process or a new drug molecule um, without having to do any experiments and it gets it right. Um, and so you know, the way this is nicely stated is it's, if you have these kind of tools, what you can worry about is not, um, you know, the, let's say the process of making that molecule, but actually, you know, understanding why that molecule works. So the whys get to be, you know, the forefront rather than all the kind of effort of you know, design and synthesis and so on and so forth. <laughs>